Today, I'm gonna to show you how to apply powder foundation without looking cakey. This works for any skin type, mature skin, oily, combination, normal, or dry. This is my go-to quick and easy powder foundation routine that I use on my over 40 combination oily skin. Those of you with my skin type probably worry that you're gonna get very shiny quickly throughout the day or that powder foundation is just gonna wear off your face. If you have dry or normal skin, more than likely you're probably worried about looking very heavy or powdery because it's a powder. So during this video, I'm going to be talking to you about how to apply this powder foundation, starting with skin prep. We're gonna talk about concealing and how to finish the process and set the powder foundation so it won't come off of your skin. I'm gonna to talk to you about three beginning steps and then I'm gonna go into a voiceover while you watch exactly what I do. So let's go ahead and get into it. First thing to note is that it does not matter when you apply your eye makeup. You can apply your eye makeup before you start your powder foundation or you can apply it after. It has no bearing whatsoever on your powder foundation or liquid foundation routine. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. The second thing I wanted to note is skincare. You want to make sure that your skin is very well prepped since we are dealing with a powder. So be sure that your skin is moisturized well. Even if you have oily skin, it needs to be hydrated skin. Whatever skincare you normally use, if it works well for you, by all means use that. And be sure that the last step of your skincare is your sunscreen. For those of you who have oily or combination skin like I do. I'm gonna put the sunscreens that work well for me down below. The type of sunscreen that you use can make a big difference on whether your foundation in general is gonna slide off of your face, whether it's a powder or a liquid. I have two that work really well for me at keeping my powder foundations, my liquid foundations on my face and they seem to work well with different types of foundations as well. They sink in well, they look good, so I'll put those down below. But be sure that you apply your sunscreen that it has several minutes to sink into your skin before you go in with the first step of your makeup, which is going to be primer. Most people use powder foundations on days when they need to do a quick makeup routine, so they think they could just skip primer, but the opposite is actually true. Primer is a must under powder foundation in order for it to apply better, more smoothly to the skin and wear better and longer throughout the day. Now I have certain primers that I really enjoy wearing under powder foundations. I'm going to list them in the description box down below the video. And you probably have primers that you really enjoy wearing on a daily basis as well. And by all means, just use those primers. Now for me in particular with oily combination skin, I prefer to use a primer that does a great job of smoothing my skin, smoothing my pores, and helping my foundation last a long time on my skin while allowing me to go a long time without getting greasy in my T-zone, which is pretty much what I look for in most of my primers. Now the primer I had on my face today is the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer. It does a great, great job of smoothing the skin, smoothing the pores, and just giving a really great canvas for any foundation, whether it's liquid or powder. And it also just mattifies the skin, but without making it look tight or dry, it's not too matte. It's just a great smooth velvety finish, which I really, really enjoy underneath powder foundation. Now that you've primed your face, let it sink in for about a minute. It's time to start correcting and we're going to get into the demo. I've seen some powder foundation tutorials and videos show using the powder foundation to cover up dark circles underneath the eyes. But if you're over say 35 and you have dark circles or texture or dryness underneath your eyes, that is not going to work. If you have discoloration, I highly recommend correcting and concealing underneath your eyes just as you would with a liquid foundation, but doing this step prior to applying your powder foundation. When I'm using powder foundation, I prefer to use a lighter texture concealer underneath my eyes, but one that still has a decent amount of coverage. I'll put some options in my description box down below for you. I'll also link you to my concealers playlist where I give you way more information about under eye concealers than you probably ever wanted to know, but a lot of people have found it helpful. Now for the face, I do like to use a slightly more bulletproof spot concealer. I'll also put some of those options in the description box. 
And as far as blending these products out, you can use your finger, a sponge, a brush, whatever method looks natural. It doesn't have to look perfect because you are going to be covering it with powder foundation. Now for the spots, the redness, the discoloration that you're covering on your face, you may have to touch up a few spots after you apply your powder foundation, but with the method I'm showing you, it will probably be a very minimal amount. Now to set the under eye area, I highly recommend using your regular translucent powder. If you go in with the powder foundation, it's going to look a little bit heavy and probably drier and not settle as well as the day goes on. You also have an option here to set the spots that you concealed on your face with that same translucent powder to make them a little bit more budge proof if you so choose. It just depends on how much extra time I have. Notice I'm using a dense soft brush versus a big fluffy brush or the sponge the powder foundation comes with. Applying in quick stippling motions this way is very quick. It gives great coverage and won't move around the concealer we just applied. It also stays in place much longer and controls shine much longer. It also melds with the skin versus sitting on top of the skin. Also note, I blend the powder foundation just to the under eye area. I showed you earlier how I use translucent powder underneath the eye. I don't like to take the powder foundation under the eye. I just kind of blend the powder foundation right up to that area where they blend together nicely. You can see the redness on the side of my face that I did not apply the powder foundation to yet. I am gonna speed up the application on this side just to even both sides of my face out really quickly. Now both sides are even, and I'm gonna take that same brush and kind of do swirling, buffing motions all over the face. And this, for me, just buffs that in even more and kind of makes it look a little bit smoother on my face. I just feel like this melds it into the skin. Now we got great coverage with that brush, but taking a dry sponge will amp up that coverage a little bit more and pressing it into areas that you want to be a little bit more bulletproof, like your T-zone, will add a little bit more coverage and increase the shine proof power as well. This is an optional step, but if you want to make things look extra natural and beautiful and seamless on the skin, even less powder-like, this is great for any skin type as well. You can take a facial mist, which is not the same thing as a setting spray. A facial mist is just going to help your makeup look extra natural. It's going to take down the powdery look of any powder you apply. And I'm drying that with my little fan. And this is what we have. I'm gonna apply the rest of my makeup and come back. Now that my makeup has been applied, I am taking a teeny tiny brush and applying the smallest amount of concealer to any spots where the concealer has been wiped away by me applying my makeup. And you can see the liquid concealer is going on very, very nicely over the powder foundation and over the powder products. And I'm just tapping it in with the warmth of my finger. I've done this with cream concealer as well and it works just fine. I've been asked many times if you can use a finishing powder to finish off your makeup to make it look super airbrushed after you've applied your color cosmetics. You know, maybe you went overboard with your bronzer or your contour or your highlighter or your blush or anything you have on your face, or maybe you just want to look really airbrushed and beautiful. Yes, you can. It won't make your makeup look any more powdery despite adding more powder. I know it sounds weird, but when you put on the powder foundation the way we did, it really made it look like a liquid foundation. Finishing powder is of course an optional step. It does look really beautiful though, no matter if you're using powder foundation or liquid foundation. Another optional step of course is using the facial mist to just meld those powders into the face even further to create just a beautiful seamless look. We're drying that down again. I do, however, think an essential step for anyone using powder foundation is using a setting spray. You want to get one for your skin type, whether you have dry, normal combination, oily skin. This is just going to keep the powder foundation on your face longer. If you feel like you got a little shiny from the setting spray, don't be afraid to just tap on a little bit more finishing powder or setting powder. It's okay. 
Now, I don't know if that's what you were expecting from a powder foundation video. It's not just dusting it on with a big fluffy brush or using the sponge that comes in the package, which you can do if you're in a pinch. But if you really want to get the most out of your powder foundation application in terms of where looks and longevity, I've just found that this really, really does it. You get the benefits of having your foundation and setting powder all in one step, which is saving you time. And it doesn't take much longer than just taking that big fluffy brush and dusting it on your face and you do just get such better results. I hope you found this helpful. If you have questions or comments, let me know in the description box. I'm going to have a link here for you to my favorite powder foundations. I just did a video on that very, very recently. I'm also going to have a link down below to my one-on-one -on -one consulting services that I just started doing where you can ask me questions and I can shoot you a video message back. It's been going over really well. I've been glad to be able to help you guys with certain things kind of quickly one-on-one -on -one if you have questions for me or if you want feedback on something. So thank you to those of you who have asked me questions and have enjoyed getting feedback from me. If you're not subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.